I'm Representative Sean Mars, and I'm the other state representative in Epping. And uh, I'm going to do my best to cheat and honor the chairman's request, and I don't mean verbatim. Uh, I'm not Irish, I might go off on a tangent. This mm -hmm. is why I usually write down my testimony. Um, so thank you for hearing me today. Um, House Bill 404, in my mind, is a discriminatory bill against one project, the Grand Bridge Project. One fuel, uh, I think it should be noted that it's uh, one fuel that many federal agencies cite as one of the main reasons for the lowering of CO2 emissions in the United States since 1985. Um, and, and, and it's also concerning placement of a portion of this project in one town, Epping. Um, I want to talk about Epping for a little bit. And um, as I speak, some of you might, might ask yourself, why is he talking about this? And I hope at the end I can I can tie this all together. Um, Epping is facing what I would term an infra term an infrastructure crisis. We're under order by the EPA <coughs> to clean up two sewers we off of Route One Twenty Five. We have old asbestos cement uh, sewage lines that run under Route One Twenty Five. Uh, small section which first within the last two years, very small section. I'm told by those who work on these uh, lines that. If any substantial, uh, halfway substantial size sewage line lets go, uh, that's going to cost us about $10 million, and then the businesses can sue us. Okay? Um, when attempting to fix this one small section of the sewage line in Epping, they could not find a viable clean section to tie into because they're all old asbestos cement. Uh, a lot of our water couplings in Epping are the same water couplings in Flint, Michigan. Those are just a couple of the infrastructure issues that we're looking at. Uh, in speaking with those who work on these issues, uh, I've got a ballpark figure of about $100 million. Epping is a town with 7,000 residents. Um, I have organized meetings myself with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, Senator Shaheen's office. I'm working collaboratively with them now um, as our town officials. Um, the USDA, rural development, and I'm trying to do everything I can to, to address these issues. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is uh, neither state nor federal um, grants will cover all these costs. So my constituents, my neighbors' taxes are going up um, for whatever reason. reason. The age of the infrastructure expanding too, expanding too fast, whatever it is, it's going up. Without another revenue source, it's going to go up significantly. So if we want to talk about real estate values, you know, bear in mind how much your real estate uh, value would be affected if your, uh, your, your property tax rate go up by five to $10 per thousand. Because again, 100 million, some short term, some long term, but it's a, it's a, it's a town of 7,000 residents. Um, now, <clears throat> When attempting to bring this to the residents of Epping, um, I, I ran into some issues. I, I ran into the realization that um, there's a special interest group that's been working in Epping, um, frankly, with the smart of the bill since last year. Um, I don't want to get into dirty details, but I, I think as I speak, I, I think I can tie it into what could happen, the unintended consequences of things like this, of giving the town sole say on projects like this. Um, every time I try to, we have two social main social media pages, and people may laugh, as I say, social media pages. But that thing has 7,000 residents, and on these two pages, there's 6,000 members. Okay, so every time, that's how I put my information up. If people need, veterans need help, or somebody needs a hospital bed, you know, uh, career fairs that I have coming up, that's what we do. That's sign of the times. Every time I try to make a comment on this project, uh, going back to last year, or any factual information, um, I'm attacked. My character, uh, you know, be smirched. I'm not crying about that, but misinformation is tapped onto uh, every comment that I make when trying to inform my constituents and my neighbors about the reality of what's going on. But when I'm trying to be a state representative and get factual answers from, say, Liberty Utilities, when these constituents have questions. Now, um, there's a 90-page 
presentation that is on my town page uh, by the special interest group with many, many, many misstatements in it. It was never vetted. There's no opportunity to vet um, or to answer back. We never had an opportunity before this popped up on, the, on our town page. Um, there's references to the incineration zone, which you, you folks are science and technology. That's not a scientific term at all. Um, there's been allusions to, and again on, on my folks, there's been allusions to uh, this is the equivalent of an atomic bomb. I don't want to get into the whole details of the project, but the project is on approximately 140 acres, the tank I'm talking about, <coughs> approximately 140 acres, 13 of which is needed for this tank. It is in a quarry, uh, either 30 or 50 feet below. Um, it is the, there's three tiers, I believe, of safety when we're talking about federal regulations, federal regulations, uh, when it comes to tank projects. And this is the top tier, which is a tank within a tank. Um, you know, that's just something, it, it's as safe as it's gonna be. I'm from South Boston originally, a few miles from the tank in Dorchester. There's never been an issue. Uh, can anybody tell me when, uh, I, well, I, I researched and I can't find an actual sizable liquid natural gas tank exploding and incinerating a town. Uh, <clears throat> um, but again, when I try to put this out, you know, the, the information gets bogged down, it gets argumentative, and the residents don't, don't get the actual facts on this. Um, You're doing pretty good not reading verbatim anyway, right? <laughs> I think you're hitting most of it pretty well. <laughs> um, now, wh wh why do I bring all that up? Uh, I bring that because should the legislature validate this bill against one fuel and validate the activities that have occurred in my town <coughs> um, and invalidate the two state agencies who have already been set up to deal with regulated utilities in New Hampshire, there is a very real possibility that your town and your residents and your constituents and neighbors will get caught up in one of these hit for cat arguments and not get the actual uh, factual information. You know, um, I can also guarantee you that you will see, you could take that bill verbatim and just change natural gas to solar or wind or hydro or an expansion of a state road, you know. Um, if the legislature steps in, in my opinion, and votes to kill one project which is already regulated by the SEC, PUC, and or the DOT, um, there's a very high likelihood that you're gonna see more. And to me, it's, it's, a, it's a can of worms. Important to note, Town of Epping uh, does have a warrant article on the ballot this month. The town will have a say, okay? Um, another uh, thing to point out is that Northern Pass did fail. You know, so some towns have some say, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, the, the vote in March can be taken to the SEC or the PUC as evidence. Um, now, some of you may know me and perhaps may know that I'm, I'm not an ideologue. Uh, there was a little debate last session um, I think it was called Right to Work. I'm not sure, but uh, <laughs> I wrote against it. One of my arguments against Right to Work at that time was that that's not a major factor. What a major factor is in businesses leaving the state of New Hampshire or not coming to the state of New Hampshire is that we have some of the highest energy costs in the country. I want to talk about Epping again. Uh, six hours in Epping. They gave previous testimony that should the energy costs continue to rise, they're very likely going to leave New Hampshire. That's going to negatively affect my town. Um, you know, you, I'm not going to tap too much, but you, you, you've heard and you will hear testimony about how the costs, and you know better than me, the costs rise um, certain times of day, certain times of year when the demand is high, and I believe that that's what this liquefied natural gas tank is going to address. Um, the pipeline is all along the state property. Um, again, I, I refer to the quarry in Epping where it is, uh, where it's located. That has been not unused for many, many years. Um, and, and I'm a firefighter paramedic by trade. And when I looked into this issue, 
liquid natural gas frozen or brought down to a temperature of somebody knows better than me, negative 159 <coughs> degrees is not flammable. So uh, I just want to point that out. Um, the New Hampshire Senate last session voted 22 to 2 to recommend the Grand Prix project because they understand the energy needs that we have in New Hampshire. In closing, um, I ask if you don't, you do not want your constituents caught up in, in future ideological battles where uh, information false and real is given to them. If you don't, do not want to validate the tactics that, like I already said, were used in my town, uh, block residents from getting um, ample information. Although, I, as I say that, I need to also say that there's been numerous information sessions um, in the town with the Board of Selectmen, public information sessions, and there will be more. Um, you know, I myself have, have put it out there many times that if anybody has a question, please give it to me and I'll find an answer. Uh, I've yet to find Liberty Utility to give me one misstatement. Um, if they do, I will certainly put it out there, you know, because I care about that. I don't care about Liberty. I don't care. I care about that thing. I care about the answer. That's just the way I am. Um, so I ask you to vote ITL so that this proverbial can of worms is not opened because of one project in one town. And um, in my opinion, the legislature should not be passing laws based on one-time projects when there are already avenues for projects like this to be heard. Thank you. Thank you. Did you know that you can download the ISBN app and I believe the Honorable Mike Close has it. Yes, yes. I got it for him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for taking my question. Thank you for your testimony. Um, I, all of us here have received a lot of email from some people out of the country. Um, but um, and in, 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 in almost every case, uh, they cited what I feel are false premises. Explosions and things like that. Um, what um, what type of um, it, 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 it's this type of, of misinformation that you even said that you saw on social media? What do you feel is the, the real underlying reason of such a uh, uh, pushback on this project? Assuming that claims that everyone is setting out about explosions and things like that really don't hold water or don't hold LG. Um, what do you think the real reasons are behind the pushback? Uh, have you gotten any real factual information as far as what the real reasons are? Thanks for the question. I don't know, I don't know how in depth I want to go there. You do bring up um, a, a reminder to me though. I campaigned in the town of Epping, okay? I did not hear <laughs> many um, overwhelming concerns. There are some, but it was certainly not the overwhelming majority. And I would urge everybody on the committee to go back and look at those emails that you received and find out how many are from the town of Epping with residents, with uh, 7,000 residents, you know, just to compare. Um, there are valid concerns, and, 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 and uh, you know, I have concerns. You know, my two nine year olds play right there by that, you know, in a baseball field there. So it's, it's obviously okay to have valid concerns. I think it's uh, the ability to get factual answers out there and to answer these questions for people to alleviate concerns is of utmost importance. And why I went into a special interest group is because the blocking of that can happen on any project should we go forward with this, you know? Um, let's pick a small town where a thing is gonna go in and, and, and you've got 2,000 residents and you've got 2,000 members of, the, of a, a special interest group and they just bomb the town. And, and, and so that's gonna affect the entire state, if, you know, depending on what the issue is or what the, you know, what the project is. I think um, overall that there is a, 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 a push for renewable energy now. Um, the same group put on my town public, well, our town public property in the library are renewable now, neon sign at night when they testified in front of the board of selectmen. Um, you know, in, in my, you, you folks know better than me, but my understanding in looking at the federal sites is that solar accounts for exactly 
of the penny to use in New Hampshire and win a town for eight. Um, I'm all for renewable whenever it happens. Um, you know, my rudimentary understanding and, and looking at the subject is we're not there yet. You know, um, I would love to be there. So I, I, I think behind this and why you're getting out of country and out of state emails on this is because there's a, there's a, there's a push for renewable now. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, so, do you think there might be a um, change of opinion uh, if, uh, if it was known that this project was capable at some time of replacing oil or coal heat with natural gas heat to heat its home, which would be getting a lot less emissions out there? Absolutely. Um, and another point is that there is the ability to put solar panels. Again, this, this project is, a, is, you know, they need to buy, I believe, 140 acres. They need 13 or 15, but there's a possibility of putting solar in there and working in conjunction with them. I don't think that Liberty is anti-renewable in competition with them, you know? Um, so, you know, I think there's many, many benefits that, that people haven't heard about, and frankly, I haven't heard all about. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think you, what you referred to last year, the, the vote was actually, I think the bill was more like the right to work for life. <laughs> yes, and that's my opinion. I, I sympathize entirely with uh, the, your, your town's infrastructure <laughs> problem. But it seems to me you're suggesting that the way out for your town and others is to go begging to for-profit companies for some kind of revenue so you can fix your infrastructure problem. Wouldn't you think it would be a better idea to say, say to the state of New Hampshire, you need to reinstate the funding for infrastructure in the state and get the revenue for it? Thanks for the question. Um, well, I think my answer to that would be, how are you gonna get blood from a stone? Because I think that our energy uh, capacity, capability, and cost is and it, a deterrent to businesses coming here and businesses staying here, and therefore our young workers staying here, contributing to the overall revenue stream coming in. Um, but, you know that's kind of my overall agenda is is to is to is to make it uh, a fertile environment for businesses to come in, so that we don't have to nickel and dime each other on PCYF or school building aid or or infrastructure projects like that. There's a lot of reasons, in my opinion, that uh, that my particular town wound up in this situation with the infrastructure, but I certainly don't think that it's unique either. Um, I don't find it as begging. I see it as an opportunity, and I think more importantly, what is important is that uh, the ability for someone to, with a, with a preconceived agenda, to bombard a town and mix up the facts, shall we say, or, 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 or assist in, in the residents not getting the full factual information, potentially coming with, with a negative vote that could hurt me. Any other questions from the committee? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.